Before Frank McCourt's Pulitzer Prize winning memoir, Angela's Ashes, before Malachi McCourt's best-selling memoir, A Monk Swimming, there was a play called A Couple of Blackguards. The brothers wrote the play together more than two decades ago. It tells the story of their early lives and served as the inspiration for their memoirs. The play is now in production off Broadway. Here is a scene. Limerick is beautiful, as everybody knows. And by that city of my heart, the proud old Shannon flows. It sweeps down by the brave old town, so pure in depth and tone, as when Sarsfield swept the Saxons from the walls of Garyon. Frank, Malachy, and your noble selves. I'm from Limerick. So am I. Limerick is the oldest city in Ireland, the second oldest in the British Isles. It sits where the River Shannon swings to the right and emigrates to America for itself. <laughs> Limerick is a very ancient city with castles, walls, and crumbling ruins. And it's such a historic city that the favorite word of the Limerick man is was. <laughs> and the women of Limerick are the women. Is there anyone in the civilized world who hasn't heard of their beauty, their piety, and the ferocity of their chastity? <laughs> the favorite word of the Limerick woman is no. Joining me now, Frank McCourt, currently at work on the sequel to Angela's Ashes, and his brother Malachi McCourt, who is working on a sequel to his book, A Monk Swimming. I am pleased to have both of them here. Now, here it is, 19 years ago. What, what's the inspiration for this? I mean, where did this idea come from? And for the couple of laggards? Yeah, uh huh. Uh, it came from. Well, first of all, Frank and myself would always. We always had the habit of talking anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh, having had a, a father who was very loquacious, and and growing up in a neighbourhood where there was nothing else to do but talk, and so we had wonderful, uh, vicious and malicious gossip, and uh, great talk and heroic deeds about very insignificant events. And uh, so Frank was teaching at, uh, in, in New York here at the Stuyvesant High School and other places. And I was in the saloon business and uh, doing radio and so on. Oh, it was beautiful. Anyway, Frank said one day, we should put this on the stage. Uh, what, said I? He said, these stories that we talk about in our childhood. And I said, what are you talking about, Frank? Who'd be interested? Well, he said, my students are and the people you talk to are. And so I said, start there. There we go. And there it was. Well, it was there were already, we already had audiences in that sense because Malachi had been in the bar business up over on the east side and he had the first singles bar in America on, on 63rd Street and 3rd Avenue. What was it called? Malachi's. Oh, Malachi's. What else would it be called? Oh, of course, it was certainly one I was very He's involved in Malachi's. He was, <laughs> <called Malachi's. laughs> he was yeah. the trump of the bar business. Yeah. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, he, had his, uh, he, he had his storytelling nights and I had my, and of course I was teaching five classes a day in the high schools, at various high schools. And uh, because the minute I opened my mouth, the kids would say, yeah, oh, yeah, you Scotch or something? <laughs> so uh, they, they, were, they were curious about my, I suppose, to them, exotic accent. Yeah. And they'd, um, they'd ask me about things. And I'd, I, was very str I was very reluctant to tell them anything. Uh, I was always warned by other teachers, don't tell them a thing. Yeah. You are the teacher. Don't tell them about your private life, your past, because they use it. But I found uh, it wasn't that way at all. That, talking about myself was my bridge. It eased me into teaching because it was it very was, hard. It was said, Frank, about you that you did not teach English. You taught Frank that, no. McCourt. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You, can't, you, have, you have to deal with the material. But, but they, coming they, from inside you, though, there was the language. Oh, the, yeah, there was the language. But uh, uh, you can't talk about yourself five times in five classes a day. You have I to could. deal with... <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, but I had That's these, what they do at a bar. You, you could. Yeah. Not, not, not when you're teaching. So, uh, that, that was, so that was the genesis of this show. How close are you two? We're I mean, great well, friends. We're Geographically, we move closer because I, I really no, 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 you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we have. We, I mean, are you really close? I oh, mean, this yeah. is the kind of yeah. thing you. This yeah, is. Well, well, we we went through rough times together when we were kids, and then we, when we came to the states, we went different ways. Yeah. But we were always in touch. Maliki was an uptown type, and I was a downtown type. He was he was night, and I was day. But we were always in, we were always in touch, and then we'd have family gatherings, and 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 at the same time, we always talked about each other behind each other's That's back. Bad. Of course, you did. the gossip. Yeah. And we made sure that yeah. it got to the other one. Yeah. First, uh, we have this thing in the family. Of, we, were, we, we have Mike is in San Francisco, and yeah. Alfie is here in New York, and they're both uh, wonderful storytellers in, in their own right. 
And, uh, but we'd always, whenever we'd get together, the brothers, one brother with another, was in, in Irish circumstances, and you get two Irishmen together, and you say, who are we going to betray? And that's, yeah. uh, uh, or who are we, uh, we talk about the split in the organization, but with, uh, with us, it was this, what is he thinking about? Whatever they were yeah. thinking about, what is he thinking about? It was we always, always three against one, yeah. Yeah. or two yeah. against two, yeah. 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 and the backstabbing went on. The storytelling gift, gift, came from your father. It did, but it was it was also communal. It was it was also to the Irish community. tradition. Yeah, because there was nothing else. We didn't have television, radio, anything, anything like that. And, and there was a spray. Oh, no, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have. We, there was like no. Candles, there was nothing else. So, so when, when you have, we, we 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 should go down on our knees and thank the English for imposing this language on us, Indeed. because we we've used it very well. Thank you. Yeah. And also, and 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 misuse. You know, there's in in the in the blackguards. There's a wonderful politician named Dan Burke, and this is where we, where we learned the the his, Our amusement was you could either go to the courts, right, because there was great theater there, or listen to our politicians. You think you had somebody, you had Dan Quayle? You should have heard the mayor of Limerick, Dan Burke. I'll give you an example. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and fellow patriots, welcome to this extinguished assemblage. <laughs> Let me reiterate what I am about to say. I see before me faces that are not here, and I hope that those who are absent will take particular note of my words today. And then he goes on, he talks about how we, because we were mis... We, we, we had a lavatory outside, which was killing just about everybody in the lane. But he said, when I am elected, I'm going to make sure there's public lavatories the length and breadth of Limerick. And not alone should we build urinals for the men, we should construct arsenals for the women. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. That from the mayor. <laughs> that from the mayor. Uh, uh, no, you couldn't uh, help but elect that man uh, to extremely high Watching you, you two used to perform this. Oh, yeah. Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah. For, for many years. years. Yeah. 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 Do you think that everybody has this richness of experience, uh, that if they just thought about it, that there is in everybody's childhood yeah. the kinds of experiences that if they probed and thought and remembered, they could write? They could. Well, they could didn't Proust do it? He, he had a very... Yeah, uneventful life, but he dug in and found out what he felt about this and what he felt about that. And he's mm. got three, three volumes of remembrance of things past. And mm. that's all subconscious. A lot of it is subconscious. Memories, a smell, the feeling of, yeah. of, a, of a diamond, something like that. And, and so any, every, every life is, in a sense, sacred. And every life is fascinating because it's a mystery. That's the main thing. But that's what, we, that's what we, you discover when you're writing, the mystery. And that's one of the things the church gave us, too, the sense of mystery. You look at somebody in the subway and you say, I could, I could sit with that person and write a book about them. Because it, it, so much of it is not what happens, but what they're dreaming about and, how, and their frustration. That's the book. That's the life. That's, that's literature. That's what Joyce discovered and Proust and the rest of them. Every, there, I don't think there's a life on, on this planet that, that isn't fascinating. I, I, I've, said, I've said before, I, although I've had reason to regret it later, there's no such thing as a boring person. I don't have <laughs> stuff there. <laughs> well, we Why are we going to be boring? <laughs> I, I, I think that I, um, my own uh, opinion uh, is that uh, we were fortunate in the sense that we had sort of a history of oppression. And I have uh, one of my axioms is that to make good wine, you have to crush the grapes. Yes. And uh, so we are the good wine of coming out of, of being crushed by institutions, by the, by the church, which people will say, oh, now you're attacking the church again. But it was. It was very oppressive. And then we had the just short time before we were born, actually, the Brits were there uh, crushing the Irish. And, uh, and all the institutions in Ireland uh, failed us. The schools failed us. The government failed us. The, the, to an extent, the charity institutions uh, also failed us. So we had to make our own lives. And we were very fortunate in, in that. Uh, when we wrote The Couple of Blackguards, um, which is now playing at the Triad in, in, in yeah. Manhattan... Uh, I'm just getting ready to say that. We are? Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I thought I might get that in case we might forget. Uh, when we wrote it, we thought it was ordinary, in a sense... I think, I thought, I didn't even... You mean, like, bland? Well, not so bland as... Sort of, well, it's just something that happens to anybody yeah. could. This could happen. I mean, we were, we were struggling one day outside next door to Mrs. Collins. We were about eight or nine. And uh, J uh, Billy Campbell and Frank and myself and a couple of others. And we fell in Mrs. Collins's door. And I ended up on the bottom. 
and they got up and fled. And Mrs. Collins came out, and she's looming over me with this big black shawl on her. And she's looking down at me like this black avenging angel, and she says, If tis the way ye come crashing to the portals of my doorway again, tis the way I'll be smashing your countenances. Now that from an illiterate woman, you might say, but look at the use of the language. And when she would throw out a basin of dirty water, what would she say, Frank? Gardy Lou. Gardy Lou. These are words, there were certain Elizabethan words that stuck in Limerick language that, that uh, nobody else uses anywhere around the world. But uh, I, I, uh, I discovered a lot about, I used to, like Maliki, we, knew, we didn't want to talk about this at all when we came to the States, when we came back. Shame. When, when I was 19, Maliki was 20, I think. But we didn't want to talk, my mother didn't want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, in the first performance, my mother, <laughs> my mother, uh, this was 20 years ago, in a theatre over on the east side, uh, the Billy Monk, which is gone now, she gets up during the middle of the first act and announces to the audience, it wasn't that way at all, it's all a pack of lies. <laughs> it's your mother. Yes. That's my mother. So I said to her, well, come on up on the stage and tell us your side truth. of the story. Yeah, yeah. She said, I will not get on the stage <laughs> with the lights to ye. She stood up happen. and said, a yes, pack, pack of lies. A pack of lies. And she said, I wouldn't be come on the stage with the likes of ye. I have a good name to maintain. And then she sat down. <laughs> and by the way, they're not my sons at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, encouraging yeah, your sons to fame and fortune. Denial is not <laughs> They she say. didn't. Um, she didn't like this. She didn't like this show at all. She yeah. didn't like. She wouldn't have liked anything we've done lately. Because she wouldn't have liked. Angela's she wouldn't ashes. have liked Angela's Ash. Oh no! She, and she complained about us all the time. She used to say, "Look at you, four sons. Not one of you married a nice Irish Catholic girl. There's nothing in this family but Jews and Protestants, Protestants and Jews. Every time I cross the floor, I'm tripping over little Jews and Protestants. And then the kids will come <laughs> run at you, Dad." What was Nana doing to me in the middle of the night, pouring water all over my head? <laughs> I think she, she baptized the goldfish. She baptized, <laughs> and I know for a fact, Charlie, that she used to, she used to, she used to babysit her on the Upper West Side, because she lived near America. She'd babysit for Jewish families, and I know she baptized them. There's a lot of Jewish, young Jewish men and women wandering around. They're Catholics. They don't know they're Christian. They never knew. They're and wondering why they're invoking Jesus at every opportunity. And, yeah. and they're saved. They don't know that they're saved. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could go on and on, and we will another time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Great Charles. To see you. I, I can't. I, look, I was wondering about this table. Uh, yes. Is there any way we could see? Because I've, I've been watching this show for years, yeah. and I often wondered what the legs were like, and I've never <laughs> no, seen them. Don't do that. Can we have them <laughs> close up? <laughs> <laughs> I love this table. They're like yeah. me. So They're good. old. And I can't believe I'm here too either. Thank you very much, Thank you, Charles. Uh, Thank you, Malachi. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you again. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.